Welcome to Samutsari, Conversations with Mimi, a weekly podcast by Dinosocial, also a member of the Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. Samutsari is where we can show that ordinary people do extraordinary things. Tune in to be entertained and to learn something new with your host, Mimi Lorilla. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Samutsari Conversations with Mimi. This is your host, Mimi Laurelia. This is a podcast featuring hot topics and obviously topics of interest to men and women alike. We feature guests who share their passion and commitment to their profession or, or talents. And here at Samutsari, we share stories to inspire you with uh, everything that's going on with other people that do extraordinary things. And um, Samatsari is also a member of the po- Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate, so I'm very thankful for them for um, including me in, in their network of podcasters. So today, I have uh, with me back Tida Mimi Cortez of Campo, but she has a plus one. <laughs> a plus one, and this is the love of her life, Tito Pito Campo. So hello again to both of you, and please... Um, Greet my audience, listeners, viewers. I'm getting confused because this is a podcast and also this is a YouTube uh, video video cast. So you never know oh, who is listening or viewing us. But uh, at any rate, please um, say hello to everybody. Hello, hello. again. <laughs> hello to everybody. Okay, thank you, Paul. Our topic for today is obviously about couples okay married couples and i think the most appropriate title for my show today is tips to keep a happy and healthy married life and um i i believe that the two of you are um a couple that need to be uh, you know, the, when we say couple goals we need to strive to become like you how to be you paul <laughs> how to be you wow. 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 <laughs> So, um, I, as you know, I am already an orphan. I lost my dad uh, seven years ago, and I lost my mom this year. So definitely, I only have my husband and my kids for my support uh, because my brother is in Canada. He's so far away. There are only two of us children. So I really, um, I really admire couples like you who have been together for a long time and, and still going strong. So. I think it's best to introduce you by letting you tell your story. Who is Mimi and Pete in your relationship and um, what's going on right now? Can you um, give us a little bit of a taste of your, of your, of your life as a married couple? I'll let Pete first do the talking because I already talked uh, <laughs> much in your previous show. It, it's okay. Well, Let's give Tito Pete the, the, the floor. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe we're not really an outstanding. We're just an ordinary couple. We're trying to live life, simple living, with you know, three children already well established in life, ten grandchildren. Uh, life. We, you know, we we both worked at the university, and that is where we met. But of course, it was some fifty-three years 50 ago. Fifty-three years ago. <laughs> But Mimi stayed with the university since then, up to the, after her arrival. But I didn't stay with the university long. I left the university in 1994 and went to the Department of Health. Mm-hmm. So initially, we were together professionally and domestically. But at a certain point in time, I had to go to Manila to work here. Me? Okay. Me and the man? Okay. Um, okay. I, I think. We have to tell this. Our three children were so fortunate that, that they, they were schooled at UP Los Banos, just like you. And uh, because I'm employed with the university, my children studied under free tuition fee arrangement. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, for faculty dependents, they can study. For as long as they pass the UPCA, the college admission test, they can study for almost three. So my eldest, uh, our eldest became an ophthalmologist. Uh, Taking up medicine is a very expensive proposition, but 
was so lucky. Again, thanks to UP, he got free, almost free medical education. And then the second, your classmate Oliver is an agribusiness and also employed with the university this time. Uh, Cherish is in Lon is in uh, England. For a while, she was into wildlife studies. She even went to Ghana, Africa, uh, to practice her profession. And so we're that very fortunate to have UP Los Banos as our uh, Alma <laughs> uh, We met there, you know, and uh, our children also got the education there. Mm -hmm. Even our yes, I th we ha already have two grandchildren schooling at UP Rural High. Your own wow. alma mater. Yes. yes. Wow. So the grandkids are doing well. And your children are obviously doing well in their chosen fields of endeavor. I just want to backtrack a little bit and in terms of Tito Pete's profession because in our last uh, previous episode, Tita Mimi had already explored her community development background. And uh, in that uh, episode, I, I mentioned to her that she is uh, appropriate to be called an ambassador <laughs> because of the many things that she does. But Tito Pete, you chose to specialize, I think, in... Um, in the agriculture field and you were also in charge of the national dairy program uh, my husband works at the dairy plant at the moment so they're milking processing milk so can you give us a little bit about your your uh, profession your role uh, in the dairy program and being um, the director i think uh, can you also tell us a little bit about the state of the dairy program in the philippines even if it's just a uh, just a very quick snapshot of what it is. Okay. Uh, when I left the university in 1995, I was assigned to the National Data Authority. As the administrator, I was in charge of the whole national you should, not, you should not be too humble. He was the first administrator of the National Data Authority. <laughs> very humble. <laughs> we had this national program. We tried to establish cooperatives and engage in dairy production. But it's not simply production, but integrated dairy production. Production, processing, marketing, the whole dairy chain. That is what we had to establish. And I think as of today, a dairy industry has started to develop in the Philippines. Because the volume of milk has increased, the number of farmers have increased. What, ha what happened, however, about 19, I think, early 2000, I was assigned to the Livestock Development Council and I was in charge of the National Livestock Program. So it was not simply the dairy program, but the whole livestock program. It's beef, swine, health, the whole thing. So I was fortunate to work on those, on those assignments until I retired in 2007. Mm -hmm. So do you think that the agricultural sector, um, especially in the livestock industry, for example, the dairy industry, do you do you feel that there is still a role to help the country flourish given the the climate of doing, for example, exporting other products rather than producing our own? Do you think there's still a hope to thrive? The, uh, there's not... A the, the, the prospects for the livestock sector are really bright. If you look at the dairy sector, for example, as they say, we are only in producing less than 1% of the total production. But this has significantly increased because our, the, of the targets of dairy production is not simply to be self-sufficient or to, be, to produce all that we need. The target is really is to develop an integrated dairy industry controlled by the dairy farmers. Mm -hmm. And this is what the shift Dairy farmers cooperatives are the ones engaged in the whole whole dairy chain. It is not the government. It used to be the government was producing and collecting the milk. That's not true now. It's a private sector cooperative doing this. So if this can be sustained, we have now the beginning of a truly indigenous dairy industry. Mm -hmm. Starting from the grassroots. Okay. Uh, the livestock sector, on the other hand, the prospects are very bright. We're definitely doing very well with respect to the swine and the poultry industry. We can compete with other Asian countries in terms of production and productivity. So 
we will continue to pursue this. Plus, the policy support from the government in terms of incentives and in terms of mm-hmm. certain other support systems, especially health, would continue to be done. Mm-hmm. Wow, I feel like uh, I'm so privileged today having both experts in one one Zoom <laughs> meeting in my podcast with a lot of wealth of information, with a lot of your extensive experience, and lucky that the UPLB community. Um, still have these experts, um, although some of them are obviously retired like yourselves, um, there's still that uh, wealth of knowledge spreading around. So I really feel privileged to be an ISCA, uh, a graduate of UPLB because, um, you know, that's where I also grew up and, and that's where I, uh, you know, my, my parents found each other. So similarly to you, you probably found each other in the university. So, because we're talking about your love story today, how did you know that each other is the one? How how did you know? Because when you're in the university setting, there's so many boys and girls floating around in the sea of of um, you know the student population. So, can you give us a little bit of a backtrack in history of the time when you met each other and and thought that each other is the perfect partner? I will start first. <laughs> uh, we didn't okay. meet while we were studying. Huh? Uh, we didn't meet while students, but uh, we met in the course of our work. My first job in the university. Okay. And also his. In his first university. job in the university. Yeah. And so for seven months, we were, we were colleagues and uh, friends. That's all. But uh, suddenly one morning he came to our house and courted me. And the following day, when are they engaged? Back. Okay, he came back and uh, with the confluence of many factors, yes, we got engaged. And count 11 days, we were married. So I think this guy is very lucky he didn't spend much in courting me uh, because he was very fast in the draw. When he mm. came to our house, there was this other guy who was uh, who was proposing marriage to me before going to the United States. But he answered for me. He said, you know, he mentioned the name of the guy. I, I know you are paying for to this girl. But I am in love with her, and I know she is in love with me. And when she was, lo- when he was looking at me, I just said yes, and that's it. So on that second day, we became we became engaged, and so wow. that was it. But so clever, so persistent, so methodological in his work, very systematic. He's got something in between his two years, and so I said he's the one. Are you referring to me? He's the one. <laughs> I'm not sure. If... What, what a very, what a very unique story because I think nowadays we would tell the younger um, generation to really kilatis or really um, hold back a bit before they choose the one because it's more dangerous now to be involved in an online relationship. For example, you don't really know the person, but during your time, you were really sure. So, Tito Pete, how, how did you know that Tita Mimi is, is uh, different from all the girls? Ah, uh, I knew <laughs> that she was the one then. But, you know, this thing about knowing two of us, knowing she is the one, you know, knowing that she is the one is not a static concept. It's dynamic. Mm-hmm. The Mimi of 1994 is not the same Mimi as today. In 2000, I was very married. 1960. <laughs> <laughs> the Mimi in 1967. It's not the same Mimi today. Mm-hmm. People change. We change. We grew together. So the confirmation of whether she is the one is done as we live to very life. That's to right. To trial, to successes, to whatever. In the daily return of life, this is when you validate that she is the one. If during in 1967 she was the one, even with married life, we continue to discover that she is the one. Then, mm-hmm. that is the one. 
Wow. How I wish my yeah. husband would say the same to me every year that there's an affirmation that I am the one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, that's really how it is. In marriage, you grow together as a couple, right? You change. But the point is that you grow together, you know, as you grow together, you carry the same thing. Parang sabay kayo nag grow together. And you keep on discovering every day, she is the one. Parang nagluluto, pinaaway ka or something, but you still know that she is the one. Wow, okay. I think yeah. you're one of the most patient human beings. Tito Mimi, can you add to that? No, yeah. But I think what really uh, made me look at him in a pedestal, you know, <laughs> in no matter how short we our, our courtship days were, is that passion, the same passion for work, yes. mm. especially for rural development and the upliftment of uh, farmers' lives. Uh, we have also the same work e ethics. Um, we enjoy working, and uh, and uh, that's why I'm able to do things, you know, allow he allowing me to go where where work is, where where work demands my going with you and there. Mm -hmm. So I call him the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he gives me the push. Yeah, even uh, in my work, he he props me up. I, wow. I just remember, the passion for work, the passion for rural development, the passion to uplift the life of farmers. I think that was the tie that bound us in mm -hmm. our early marriage and went well into our married life. Of course, now things have changed because I've retired, but it's still that passion. Mm -hmm. So, my takeaway from what you just said is really the, the, the way that will bind you together is your similarity in terms of your values, <laughs> your work ethic. <laughs> Uh, although you are two different persons, but if there's exactly. something that you like about each other and you emulate about each other, that really will draw you closer to the other person. Am I right? Uh, <laughs> Let him talk first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But no, if you look at it, uh, we are really a study in contrast. Mimi is very sociable, extremely. I tend to be introverted. She's a Protestant. I'm a Catholic. She's socially active and introverted. She likes Frank Sinatra. I like Johnny Cass. She likes romantic ballads. I like pop country music. She likes the warm weather. I like the cold. No, it's, I like the cold. You like, like the warm weather. <laughs> it's a litany of differences. It's a litany of differences. But it's still, despite these differences, the marriage, well, I would say strong. Yeah, yeah. I think you you are um, you are me and Jarvis in a way. <laughs> we're totally opposite, but we gel. You know, we're the yin and the yang, the sun and the moon. One is introvert, yes. one is extrovert, but we still get along very, very perfectly. Whether we we explode during a fight, but we always mend uh, mend it really, really sweetly. So that works well. So. You yes. are more than 50 years of togetherness. Maybe you will. You can tell me a little bit more about that. In each year of marriage, uh, or maybe if it's even if it's not every year, um, definitely there will be milestones that enabled you to reach uh, where you are right now. So can you tell me a little bit more about um, how do you get to the point of you me meeting or reaching the next milestone in your life as a married couple? Uh, Pete has to leave because uh, we have a, a guest right now. Okay, but that's okay. Uh, he's okay. coming back. But uh, uh, again, uh, you were saying, uh, well, we were talking about our similarities and differences a while ago. And then uh, you said something about, uh, I didn't get it. I didn't get it because I was attending to the visitor who came. Ah, uh, okay. So I was asking, um, so now that you are in that stage of your married life, obviously you will um, have certain milestones, I think, that you want to I am. Or, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I get it. Actually, 
there's not much milestones to talk about for the two of us, you know? Uh, sometimes, that, you know, we just live by the day. No more strategic planning. Not even short-term planning. <laughs> we just talk, what do we cook? Uh, for tonight that's and that's, for tomorrow. That's a short term. Well, yeah, short term plan. But uh, our milestones now are for our children already. Mm -hmm. For our grandchildren. We would like to see them become what they'd like to be. And so uh, each time we see those developments, they become milestones already for us. Mm -hmm. But of course, we look forward to our uh, getting on our 60th, 70th anniversary. 70th wedding anniversary. We pray that we'll still be living, living by then. Mm -hmm. So that's a well, I, I will pray with you on to. that. <laughs> I will pray with you on that one because uh, to reach <laughs> 60, 70, 80 is really remarkable. Not everybody. Uh, gets to that stage um, even you know I, I my parents would have had their 50th this year uh, but obviously they can't do that anymore uh, but you obviously went past the the halfway mark the, the 50 you know I think you're on your 53rd so really I, I I don't doubt for a fact that you will get to that point um, but for the younger couples that are listening to us what is your take on conflict management how do you handle you know differences or possible conflicts or di um, what what how what's your strategy and how would you advise younger couples to deal with that as well you talk first hey. go ahead you talk first <laughs> I'm giving him this because sometimes when he start talking, then he will say, "Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I have said a lot already." So I let him talk first. Okay. Yes, maybe Tito Pit, you have you have your own strategy. There is no such thing as strategy team in terms of resolving conflicts. It comes, it goes. You resolve it, you kiss, you talk about it. But to say to plan out how to resolve conflict in domestic life. I don't think that's possible at all. Mm. But if you resolve conflict, you accept and you tolerate. And the joke is nice. Just say yes, then everything is settled. But that's not entirely true. Mm. What is necessary is that we learn to accept and to be tolerant about all these things. Yeah. Say sorry. Say sorry. It's necessary. As I was about to say, now in married life, I think the key is for you to be simply be yourself. Do not try to be any to anybody else. Be true, no, no airs, no pretensions, no nothing. Mm. By being yourself, by being ourselves, we have managed to resolve conflicts that way. Because we have learned to accept our differences. They was having an wise one. A uh, perfect, uh, a good marriage doesn't occur when two perfect couples get together. It happens when two imperfect couples learn to live and enjoy each other's differences. So we tend, wow. I tend to be guided by this philosophy. Yeah, there is perfection in imperfection somewhat. Yes. <laughs> you become perfect because you are two different people with imperfections. Tita Mimi, you have and something you love to add? Yeah. And you learn to live no, love the, the difference. I was trying to pick up those key words. That, uh, <laughs> those key words that Tita said. Uh, it's, first is acceptance. For what uh, each of one is, yeah, we are so different, even in religion. But he goes with me every Sunday, very regularly, in the same way that I go with him uh, in the Catholic Church. Some people even see me singing with a choir. Mm. So I accept his, and he accepts mine. We respect each other's beliefs, respect, and. Uh, Tolerance. <laughs> I think we have we have to exercise that not uh, daily in our living. You yeah. know, just just every day, I have to look at what he throws away. Mm. Right? 
Because, you know, I'm the kind who recycles and hoards things. I uh, keep things from even as late as, as, as early as my high school, college years. I have those mementos with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, even uh, what the kitchen is, I always see to it that whatever can be salvaged, I keep it. But <laughs> it's the guy who throws away every day. So, I have to be tolerant with that. Well, what, what do I do? If he throws it away, then I go to the garbage can and then get it back. <laughs> yeah, so that's conflict. Yeah, even in those simple things. But it's no reason why we should give up our marriage. Of course, of course. It's the same uh, with me. I'm the hoarder in the family. (laughs) 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 Uh, This is a very interesting interesting, uh, conversation. So you talked about tolerance and patience. Um, Does that equate to, or are those the ingredients to be faithful in a relationship? Um, so let's talk about lots of um, younger couples now have no tolerance or maybe less tolerance that just a little bit of a conflict they opt out of the marriage so in your situation what does it mean to be faithful in a relationship considering those you know di pagkakaunawaan and lack of tolerance uh there's something that hangs on our wall like god is the silent listener to our conversation and uh unseen guest at every meal uh one who listens to our conversations every day and so when you have god at the center of your marriage i think it's not only us humans doing something with our relationship. God will make sure that that relationship will prosper. Will prosper. And uh, we made those promises before God. You know, our relationship before God. And Him alone at the center of marriage can make or unmake it. But God is a loving God and He will make sure that love will always be in the air and will prosper our relationship as husband and wife, as parents to our children. Mm. Yes, uh, God is the center of our marriage. No matter the difference in religion. We do our part simply by living our marriage according to His will. That's how simple it is. Mm-hmm. Doing, being faithful in marriage is nothing but simply living married life according to the teachings of the Lord. Mm-hmm. So there are no complicated statements. It's as simple as living life, married life according to His teachings. Wow. Okay. So that's another key takeaway for me. Don't complicate things. Just live according to the simplicity and what marriage is this designed for and Obviously, God is in, in the center of it all. So let's move on to another topic, which is intergenerational living. Okay. So I, I, my idea of a good family life is my connections with, um, for example, my lola and lolo, uh, obviously my parents and my, my kids there. And I think uh, Filipinos are really family orientated or oriented that they, uh, as much as possible, want to be surrounded by uh, their children and their grandchildren. And Tito Mimi mentioned to me in another episode that you're very blessed to have a number of grandchildren. Uh, what can you say about balancing your time between your personal pursuits, being with the grandkids, doing your other community work? Give us a little bit of um, an insight around that. Well, we are very lucky that... Uh... Our five of us, half of the ten children, are living just beside our house. Mm. And so they're our, they're our source of joy every morning. There was a time that they will greet us, good morning! Every time we open the window and open the doors, we'll yeah, hear, surprising. good morning! That's every morning. And so uh, they come to the house, 
we we play with them. They come and play with the organ. No, I it's okay with me even if they look at it as a toy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay, let them go and play with it. They even have microphone sing karaoke, even the small ones. Even if the microphones are no longer working, they still sing. And they tell, ah, Lola na Lola. They take after their Lola, how they love to sing. They dance. Oh, they're so gifted. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, we have an apo is a ballet, a uh, ballerina. One excels in swimming, in mm -hmm. sports, mm -hmm. in pop music, and etc. We're so very proud of them. Now, how do we balance our being granny? We're thankful they're not giving us that much problem. Of course, when the nanny goes, the yaya, the domestic help and goes, we pitch in and uh, do our part as, grand, as grannies. Other than that, we don't have any problem. We love them staying here and we're able to... Uh, how, how, they are our source of joy. Yes. Vitamins. They are our vitamins every day. <laughs> I, I think that's what makes you fit and young as well, being with the grandkids. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I, before I talk about the grandkids, yeah, Mimi has a very particular trait. You talk about intergenerational relationships. Mimi keeps her relationships with her grand, great grand mother, grandparents, parents, grandparents, parents, not parents no more, nieces, very extended. the whole range of Cafes Calabria clan. See, the Mo mother's the side, side mother's side. And she makes it the point to visit when they are sick, to give contributions when they need it, to visit just for an occasion and to enjoy visiting them at any given time. That's intergenerational. Now, about the grandchildren, it's impossible to quantify the time spent them. We don't even attempt it because clearly time is spent with our grandchildren is the second most joyful moment in my life. Mm -hmm. okay. The first, of course, is being with me. And the children. <laughs> the yeah. children. <laughs> okay. So the yeah. family, you're surrounded with family members. Okay. So that's yeah. an everyday occurrence for you both. And um, obviously you are now retiree, so you spend more time at home. Do you still do things individually or has it come down to the default that you now do things together all the time? Well, there are some work engagements that are given to us individually. Uh, but there are times also that we find each other together. <laughs> like in some uh, consultancy, then uh, we get to be together too. <clears throat> but uh, uh, where else are we not uh, together and we are okay we're, I have my own social group yes he has his own so in that way we are similar but when I attend mine and I don't have it with me they will be asking oh where is Pete and in the same way that when he goes to his and I'm not with him they also ask him where is me me Mm. And so, mm. we're almost seen together, yeah, other than uh, individual work-based, uh, we have our professional and social groups merging yeah. together. I see. Okay, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> and then you don't, um, you don't find it difficult to work alongside each other if, if it's a, a consultancy, for example, because Tita Mimi is a, the creative <coughs> one. So she has her own ideas and Tito Pete seems to be the technical expert on this. So how do we make sure that those uh, things you do don't clash? <laughs> Again? <laughs> it clashes. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> it, clashes. <a> clash. <laughs> it clashes, but we also end it peacefully, uh, amicably, <laughs> amiably, mm. and with a kiss. <laughs> that settles it. That's yeah. good, that's good, that's good. You, that you don't let um, those little differences get in the way of succeeding in whatever little thing that you do. So can you give us some tips on um, how to become a, a, a happy spouse 
or a good spouse to your partner? Oh, I I think I said this the, uh, just the other day in another Zoom meet, meeting. Yeah. Well, the first is never, never give up on things that make you happy. To be a happy spouse, never give up on what made you happy even before your marriage. Mm -hmm. Don't begrudge your marriage. Your spouse for not being able to do what you please. Okay, so uh, that's one cardinal rule for me. After all, uh, what whatever I have, I view them as God's gifts to me. So I really should be using them. And if it if they are those, even before marriage came, why should I stop it? Just mm. because I got married. So I continue with my singing, with my dancing, with my socializing, and he does not stop me. Uh, he just let me be because he knows it's going to make me happy. So continue on giving, uh, continue on doing what gives you high. You know, when you are happy about doing those things, then go. Don't stop because you just got married. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the you world. Tito Pete, that. what can you add to that um, comment? Well, I think Mimi has, <laughs> Mimi, Mimi has uh, said it all. What no, not really. I, I what just started. Said, I think, yes. Even in marriage, to keep it hard, you have to be yourself. I mean, say, do not adjust yourself. To what is expected of you by your wife because your wife really knows you for what you are mm. no pretensions to how you are happiness i think simply living together by being yourself and each of you accepting that is, that is yourself uh i'm putting it simply because but there has very many other applications but the key be yourself and learn to accept who or what who is that's oh, right. Yeah. So be your you know, authentic you. <laughs> yeah, because each is unique. Each is individually different. And so Pete has his own circle of friends. I do have mine also. I am a member of a sorority. He's not. But we always say that there are those friends that we have kept for years, you know, dating back as early as our marriage we still have them we still go together so keep those circle of friends those who stick with you no matter what those who will build you up those actually uh, who will be with you at this stage of your life when you are already aging those who will build you up when you are young, you need friends who will build you up instead of just finding faults in you and asking that you do this, that you should be this. So Pete is right in saying that yeah, we just let each other be for what we are. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's I a very good sense. tip. <laughs> <laughs> so um, going towards the end of our um, interview now, going towards the end of our show, do you have any tips for couples um, how they can manage their time together during quarantine? And what is your advice to younger couples so that they can also experience a very nice, healthy, married life like what you have right now? I said last time we have to live as we did, no? We live a life of not wanting. We are always content with what we have and whatever we have, we use them wisely mm -hmm. and productively. Mm -hmm. And this applies not only with money and material things, but with time as well. Young as we are, me, when I got married, I have always been judicious, very judicious in handling <laughs> and managing our resources. We have lived uh, within our means, avoiding death, and credit cards, credit traps, by living simply, uh, living beyond our means does not apply to us because we even live below our means. And uh, that keeps our financial uh, 
lives in order, you know, saving enough money for rainy days as like this time when we are already retired with no more regular earnings and for emergency needs. We have always tried avoiding financial stress and that's one reason why we are happy even up to now. We do not need to depend on our children. I know, uh, making it almost like obligatory for children to help. You know, we're not that. We are even the ones who will give help if need be. But our children are much better off than us. You know, I said so we also don't have that problem. But one thing is, we always kneel and say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And I think, that's one tip I can give uh, these young people. Always be grateful, not only directly to God, but to, uh, to your parents, to your ancestors, to your elders who have given you this, this much for you to become what you are. And uh, to people around you, uh, to your circle of friends, to your colleagues, to your institutions. And uh, that has kept me going all this time. I have always remained grateful. And uh, I think this is something I'd like to part with. I always have this quotation, this Bible verse. Uh, Blessed is the man who puts his trust on the Lord, who trusts the Lord, who trusts in the Lord. Why? Because he just, he'd be like a tree planted with its roots down the stream of waters. And uh, Tito Pit, do you have any last um, message or anything to add to what has already been said? What she has said it all. To, to reduce it to the statement, we have lived, we have simplified our needs and reduced our wants. That is how simplified we are living. And I think that was the key to the success of marriage, not only financially, but I think in many other aspects. Simplify your needs, reduce your wants. And look at your life as God's gift to you. And yes. in all things, say, thanks yes. God. And That's in all right. situations, have fun. Have fun and live a life of gratefulness. Wow. Very nice message, Paul, yes. from you too. Happy and healthy life. Yes, live a happy and healthy life. Thank you. Thank you very much once again for being with me today. I really appreciate your insights. I really appreciate your words of encouragement and um, for sharing your experiences to um, to our viewers, uh, to our listeners. So um, from, from that, I would like to um, end the, the show by thanking Mimi and Pete Ocampo for joining us today. Let's wave goodbye to our audience, Tito Mimi and Tito Pete. So that has been um, Conversations with Mimi. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you once again. And don't forget to um, to, thank you to our all. future episodes. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. If you find value in this episode, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of new releases. If you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to Gorilla Podcast or send us an email at mimi at dinosocial.com. Spread the word and don't forget to tune in next time.